Hey, peoples, it is uh, September, late September, and the Merlot grapes that Amber's over here finishing picking are ripe and sweet and ready to go. And we are uh, taking today to make some homemade wine for the first time. So like anything, hop online, learn a lot of stuff, and now we're gonna put it into action today. Uh, so we're gonna start off with sanitation. Here on the table outside, we've got a bucket of cleaner we've mixed up, and this is a food safe cleaner called Star San. Got a bucket of that made up at the right ratio. And um, we're gonna show you how we're gonna process these grapes to start, but we're gonna start by using this sanitizer and rinsing and washing uh, this, this bucket that we're processing into, this bin, and this crate, which we'll show you how we're gonna use also. And essentially anything that the grape juice is gonna to touch or go into, we're gonna rinse it and wash it with stuff. The Star Sand, like I said, it's food friendly. So once you wash with it, you can actually leave it on the surface, you know, dump off the, the excess, but you don't need to rinse it off with other waters. It'll, you leave it as is. So we're gonna do that first. We're gonna rinse, and then we're gonna start processing some grapes. Okay. We're ready to go. So we are here. We are washed up and ready to go. Uh, what's going to happen here is we're going to use this um, milk crate that I bought at Home Depot. I didn't think they existed anymore, but they're still around, uh, like 10 bucks or something. And we're going to take these clumps of Merlot grapes like this. We're going to take a clump and we're going to put on nice, clean, brand new gloves and run it over this crate. This is going to detach the berries and even break them a little bit for us and drop them down into the bottom like those ones, and it's gonna leave the big long stem for us to throw away. So this is how we're going to de-stem the grapes to start with in kind of a old fashioned manner. And so again, we're gonna take uh, brand new fresh gloves that we've never used for anything. We're gonna dip them in the cleaning bucket so we're all good to go. And we're just gonna go stem by stem in here. We'll separate out the big debris like those leaves and stuff, and then throw the stems away when we're done. And uh, Amber here is gonna help me. And uh, we're gonna to listen to some good music while we're doing it and enjoy the sunshine outside. And uh, these are, again, these are Merlot grapes. Again, these are Merlot that we grew back here. They're a smaller grape purposely. It's not that these aren't ripe. These are super, super sweet right now. They're yummy. Uh, you can chew on these and the seed breaks apart really easy and you can chew the whole thing up and eat it. But Merlot grapes, as you can see, are smaller. So you're gonna have more peel to juice ratio versus some big giant fat berry. So we're gonna get lots of good tannins and lots of purpleness out of this with big fat, juicy berries you get a lot of juice so much so that you may even have to dump some off and use it for a rosé or something um, so that you can get the tannins and the remaining juice but we're not going to have that problem with merlot so this is going to be fun uh we'll let you watch us so we want to do like yep just rub them just like that just take the full hand and just and it's okay to break the berries up because we're if we don't break them now we're going to break them in a minute perfect and then you just toss that it's okay if we lose a couple teeny berries okay. boom and grab another I one. If we do like a whole handful at a time. Yeah, you can go as fast as you want. Uh, there is a de-stemming tool with like a crank yeah. and all this stuff that I found we can rent from like the, the brewery store. Might try that next year if we have more berries, but this is a perfect old fashioned cheap way to just do it. Go Amber, go Amber. <laughs> She's got this down. And again, it breaks the berry apart so the juice comes out. Start to get the tannin to juice contact. Uh, I know in general with wine, you worry about oxidization and stuff. We're not at that stage yet. That worrying about that comes later. So don't worry about the juice and oxygen in the air and all that stuff at this point. We're also going to use some stuff later that decontaminates it all in a food safe way. So uh, any whatever that might get in here out of the air is not an issue at this point. All right, we are about uh, two thirds of the way done here. Just killing it. We found a fun little method we're gonna show you here with this. Besides just like grabbing and pressing them, we found a method that kind of gets more grapes in and less stem. And Amber's gonna kind of demonstrate here. So you grab, yeah, you grab the stem, put one hand down on the grapes to push them through while the other one's dragging the stem. And it gets really, really clean versus just going back and forth. This way you control the stem staying up because you got a hand on it. Look at that, and the grapes just slide right off of there. Yeah, so if you're ever doing this, keep a hold of the stem while you're doing it. And it just, boom, that's awesome. All right, so we made it through all of the uh, de-stemming process. 
ish. We're gonna go a second round on this. So what we're gonna do down in here, if you wanna come take a look at the vines, see they've got this nice messy crate and all this. There is some little bit of uh, seed and vines, not seed, but stem and vine. The little bits of stem are not a big deal. Uh, big stems are. We're gonna go through this one more time, but in this time, I'm just gonna take handfuls of this and put it right back through here and see if I can catch any little things. Just gonna do that for a little bit. And then we're gonna take this and press into it and get it all squished down as much juice as we can with our hands. So that's the next thing, just going through handfuls of this at a time and, and working it into here and grabbing off stems or any leftover leaves, anything that'll catch on this, in this plate. And we can break up the berries a little more here too. Catch little things like that that we don't want in our process. There we go. But this, this uh, milk crate worked out really well with that method. And again, we have very little, uh, just teeny little stems in here, very little big stuff left. So I'm kind of kind of excited about how quick that went. It took us for the amount of uh, grapes that you saw in that cooler, it took us working out together in about an hour going at it. So it's been fun. So we're gonna do this for a while and then come back and we'll get into the bucket and starting the fermentation. All right, so we did a second run through there, picked out a lot of just little leaves and sticks and things that may have gotten through. And at this point, uh, if you want to come like, take a look at this, we're, we're at a mash now that um, has a lot of grapes and you can see a lot of juice down in here. Um, but there's a lot of like full body grapes in here. We want just a good mix of broken grapes. And obviously there'll be some whole grapes left in here too, which will add to the flavor, that's fine. And so we're just gonna work through this now just literally like running oh, there's another little stem see anything just pull it out again this won't hurt the flavor much at all really if you have a few stems in there but we're just going to work through here and take all of these and just give them a good mash this is kind of the, the same as you know back in the old days the people walking on the grapes and squishing them and all that right we're just going to do it by hand though because we've only probably got a good five gallons in here in general oh there's one that got through Anything you see that you want to pull out, pull out. Obviously all this big, anything that's a solid thing will be filtered out later after the fermentation process. But anything that's gonna add maybe flavors you don't want, like sticks or leaves, pull them out when you see them. There is a, uh, a de-stemmer tool you can rent at a brewery store around here that you can just run all these bundles through and it'll probably do a little cleaner job. But you know, you put a little more money into your process and since I'm only making a little bit, I didn't want to go renting a bunch of gear and all this stuff. Uh, this is kind of fun the first time to kind of learn how it all works anyway. You can run it through the de-stemmer and crank this little wheel and it goes really fast. So maybe next year on that. Yeah, we're getting tons of juice out of here. Again, we're using gloves that were cleaned with a food grade sanitizer. And we're gonna have this wonderful blend of grape juice and some whole grapes there's people that'll do brews just with full full grape no no breaking the grapes that get a different flavor so we'll have some of all of that in this there are kits you can buy that have everything but you're buying a kit that's like a big thing full of just juice nothing but juice this is actually grape uh full grape uh wine making versus just juice wine making and you're going to get a much different much fuller better product that's uh, rich and realistic with actually using real grapes than buying a juice kit. But those juice kits are cool. If you wanna just like try out the process and have everything in a box ready to go, you'll get a big box with a plastic bag with five gallons, six gallons of juice in it ready to go. And then you just go through the process and let it ferment. And then next time around, maybe you're buying grapes or growing grapes or something. Oh yeah, this is good. <laughs> At this point, again, you like we're not worried about like the air touching it or whatever. All of the stuff we're going to do with the fermenting and keeping it sanitary is going to take care of that in a minute here. Woo! Almost there. All right, we're ready to put this in the bucket. Uh, one other thing we did to try to break the grapes down a little more besides just hands, we decided... Uh, because they're Merlot, because they're small, because I wanted to get as much juice as I could, and I couldn't feel how much you know was small versus not popped and popped in there really well. Um, I brought this out, a little sink strainer, and just put back, uh, handfuls of it in that and just pressed them down and made sure I got a lot of the grapes broken down. So this is what we end up with here. We got a really soupy batch 
of uh, grapes ready to go. And it's probably about three gallons, four gallons worth of what we picked. And now we're gonna put it in this bucket. Again, the bucket's been sanitized with that star sand cleaner, uh, the food grade stuff. And this is uh, the second half of this. After prepping the grapes, everything should be kind of easy after this. We're gonna put it in there, put the stuff in that gets it going, and, uh, and then leave it alone. Don't spill after all that work. <laughs> Don't spill. <laughs> if you get it on video, share it with everybody if you spill. Right, sure. <laughs> Splishy but splashy. I really don't need those uh, lids on there. That doesn't help. Oh, 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 got to need it in the corner. Shoot, I'm losing it. Lost wow, some over there. Want to keep it in the corner. All right, a little cleanup work to do. Uh, the other, uh, the other thing just popped in my head there about those juice kits. If you buy them, they're gonna look like a big giant grab bag of grape juice. Uh, whereas this stuff, you can see, doesn't look like grape juice. It looks like dirty kind of juice right now. That's because they put ascorbic acid and other types of stuff in those to keep the juice, you know, make it all red and, and that kind of thing. Uh, and therefore, it's not 100% natural like this. It'll, it'll, you can make it into a wine just fine. It's not like putting preservatives in it. But that's why you get a purple juice in grape juice versus, versus this, which is more clear. Once these tannins off of these skins really soak into it, then we'll have a nice purple juice. But that's... Uh, now the time we're gonna go into, which is the next phase. So I'm gonna take my gloves off, and then we'll take you to the next phase. We're gonna add, uh, well first we're gonna test the, the sugar in here. So there's a sugar tool, we'll show you that tests how much sugar is in that, in this mash. Um, there's a technical name for the mash, I forget what it's called. We'll just call it the brew. Um, and that'll tell you how much sugar is in there. The amount of sugar is how much alcohol content you're gonna get. Right, because the yeast is going to eat the sugar that produces the alcohol. So we got to see what's in there already, and that will tell us if we need to uh, potentially fortify it with a little more yeast food, and therefore maybe some mixed sugar uh, to get it up to the alcohol content that a Merlot should have. So we'll go to that next. All right. So uh, we've got everything in the bucket, and the first thing we're going to do with this get rid of the bees that are trying to sting me. They're loving the smell of this grape juice everywhere. <laughs> We've got uh, some stuff called Campton tablets. Campton tablets will kill off all the bad bacteria and the microorganisms, all that, that are in the wine that are going to compete with the yeast for, uh, for that environment. So uh, all the stuff in here called the must, not the brew, it's the must I found out, I forgot, um, is going to have this in it. So we've got about four gallons we got out of all those grapes. And so we used one Campton tablet per gallon. So we got four tablets. And these tablets uh, are super small, I'll show them to you here. They're just about the size of a pill. And we crushed four of those up into powder, mixed them with some water, and uh, we're gonna pour that into the must. That's simple. And just stir it all up in there so that it's equally distributed in the must. You must keep the must clean. <laughs> Aha, yeah. And so again, that's going to kill off over the next uh, 24 hours all of the microorganisms and all the bad stuff. And that's going to make the environment ready to go for the yeast. So I actually have to wait 24 hours on this. We're going to put the lid on, let the air let the, the air get out. It will cover the air hole so nothing can get in it. But we'll have an air hole. Air's got to get out for all the sulfide dioxide or whatever the weird chemical is coming off of this stuff. <laughs> Sulfur buildup and stuff. And uh, that's got to come off and then we're gonna put the yeast in. So, but one more thing we can put in now that we're gonna put in is uh, oak chips. So we want this to have some of the effect of being like aging in an oak barrel. And obviously we're not gonna, we don't have the oak barrels and we're obviously not gonna let this age for like a year or whatever. So um, I've got a bag of finely ground oak powder, oak dust, same stuff, smoking chips, but you can see it's it's like a sawdust, right? It's. Uh, same stuff I use for smoking drinks in a little smoking gun. And we're gonna put, um, stir in about uh, a cup of this down into the must. There we go, not a cup, maybe, yeah, about three quarters of a cup. So you see that on there? I'm just gonna stir that up into there, get it finely worked into there. And if there was any micro, you know, organisms or whatever that are in that oak or on the oak, they're gonna get killed off by that Campton tablets and the, um, 
the oak now is just going to soak into this wine, kind of get the same effect of being on the surface of a barrel. So we'll see what we get out of that. And again, the same time that we filter out and rack all this wine into the big glass jars and that we squeeze out and get all the, the, the skins and everything out at that point, all the sawdust will come off with it as well. So, all right. Um, one other thing we're going to do here in a minute before we shut this down and get ready for yeast tomorrow is we're going to take an initial sugar measurement and that's going to help us know how much alcohol we're going to get out of this wine as is and so we're going to use a tool called a hygrometer hydrometer sorry and this is uh, kind of a fun one we're going to get a sample of the juice not the berries hopefully we're going to get a sample of the juice out of here with a uh, wine thief or a uh, siphon fill this up and then float this thing in it and this is going to tell us how much sugar's in there and that'll help us know if we need to add any. Uh, it also knows what our starting point is so as the yeast eats that sugar away this will float higher and higher and that'll uh, tell us how far done the uh, fermentation is. So we'll be doing that in just a minute. All right we've been having some fun and uh, we took an initial hydrometer test. We're going to do it again here and show it to you but we, uh, what this is basically, it floats in a tube full of the, the juice and tells you how much sugar content is in it. And that tells you how much alcohol content you would have once the yeast eats it all. And it's a little bit lower than we want. So we're adding just a, a pound of sugar dissolved in some water to increase the, uh, the overall sugar content. And uh, again, that's not adding sugar to it, like adding sugar to a juice or a punch so it's sweeter. Uh, this will all get eaten up by the yeast and it will just increase the content to where a normal, about where a normal Merlot would be. Our first reading told us we were around 20 bricks, which is basically going to give you about a 10 or 11% alcohol reading. We want it to be more around 13 to make it normal. So we're going to uh, stir that in there and then uh, we're going to read it one more time with a hygrometer before we put this away uh, for fermentation. Okay, so Amber here has got uh, a sieve. We, we found that our, our must, this is called the must, <laughs> is so thick with uh, berries and everything that really putting a, a wine thief down in there, basically a siphon to grab the juice is not really, there, there's not just a spot that's just pure juice right now. So we're using this uh, sieve, go ahead, to uh, kind of separate out the solid from the liquid. And that is gonna allow us to, as you can see, separate the liquid out and that allows us to grab a bunch of it. And that allows us to fill up our test tube right here. Sorry, the bees in there. The bees trying to get in there, huh? There's bees all over when you're doing this. <laughs> this is gonna allow us to fill up our test tube so that we can measure the specific gravity or bricks again to know what the uh, sugar con. Can you turn it around to the ounces mm -hmm. side again? I'm gonna fill this up to about six. Six, and then the other thing Perfect. we get. Okay, not that that six reading like really matters, but that just gives me some room to put the hygrometer in there. So the hygrometer, this is a funny little thing, it really it measures sugar levels in liquids. So we just put that in there and you spin it, give a little spin, and when it's done spinning, to make sure there's no bubbles clinging to it and all that, uh, you can see where the liquid crosses with the measurement. And in this case, we were, uh, if you can see that, we were at that two level and now we are almost at 2.5. So that sugar made a difference and that if we spin it around we're now at closer to a exactly 13 percent alcohol content potential if the yeast eats all so that uh, again one pound of sugar dissolved in a little bit of water made the exact difference we needed for this uh four gallon four and a half gallon batch of uh, four gallon batch of wine that we've got right here so that's how the hygrometer works all right we are uh, going to add the yeast uh, before we go watch the seahawks win so I've come look in the bucket here. Uh, this is after 24 hours. All of the bad stuff got killed by the stuff we put in before. I'm just going to give this a quick stir really quick and get it all. You see it's much darker purple than it was yesterday. So it's already starting to work. I'm going to just get it all agitated a little bit. Get all the husks wet and kind of stuff. I mean this is really thick with husks. So this must is uh, going to hopefully over time all the heavy stuff will come to the top and it'll be kind of like a puck that we jam down in there every couple days just to keep it wet and keep those uh, colors going into it. But 
for today. It's just a big and wet must. I've got some yeast. I bought a special kind of yeast that's really good for a robust, rich red wine, which is a Merlot. And so this is good for about six gallons. We've only got about four, so I'm gonna use about two thirds of it. And this is not like the other ingredients. We don't need to like really stir this down in there. We can just put it in there and let it go to town. And all that sugar that's already in there and the little bit that we added. So we got about two thirds of that. I'll keep a little bit around. Keep it in the fridge. And I'm just gonna get it a little bit into the surface, but I'm not gonna uh, go any further than that. There we go. And then uh, we're gonna add the lid, which is sticky that I need to clean off, but snap that on there really good. And then this guy, you can see this is a rubberized sealing hole. Uh, any air coming off of that, which there will be, will come through this, and it just pushes that cap and lets the air out real easy so this thing doesn't explode. Um, that will do that for, we'll be doing that for probably about a, uh, a week. And we'll uh, every now and then check on the fermentation rate with that uh, hydrometer, see how we're doing. But a week, we're just going to push that hard stuff down every uh, day or so, keep it rotated, keep it fermented, keep it agitated, and uh, keep this on it. And keep it in the house at uh, you know the mid-70s. That's the, a good place for this stuff to ferment well. And we'll see where we're at at the end of a week and see if we need to go another week. So that's it. It's that simple.